Hi there, my name is Raquel. I want to thank all new and returning viewers for coming back. Um, I want, today is Sunday the 3rd of uh, September and I'm going to start off by apologizing for not podcasting last week. I was washing uh, fleeces um, on Sunday throughout the day and then helping out my, uh, my mom with stuff around the house and then I was supposed to podcast on Monday or at least that's what I said I would do but it rained all day on Monday. It was a storm um, and then I had to drive home to um, back to my place because I was at my parents place so I didn't get to do that um, which was a shame because I really I did want to but um, I didn't get to do that. I've just broken the nail. I'm just gonna pause this here and cut this nail and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, sorry. Um, I was saying that I was washing uh, fleeces and here comes Rusty. Okay, up you go. Over there. Lie down. Lie down. Come on. You're in the way, Rusty. Lie down. Lie down. There you go. Good boy. Okay. That's a good boy. Um, I was... Sorry. Totally distracted again. <laughs> um, so I was washing fleeces at my parents' place. I have su I have the fleece that I washed over here. Part is washed the way I want to wash it. The way I should wash it, which is um, taking little bits and pieces and washing it carefully, removing all vegetable matter. The rest is just basically dumped into the tub and left to soak and then rubbed together to um, remove, gently rubbed together in cold water, it wasn't in warm water so no fear of felting, um, to remove as much dirt as possible because there was a storm coming and we had storm weather for three days which is not really great for drying fleece. So, but it's dry. My mom sent it to me. So, um, this is the fleece, the part that did not get washed properly. Here it goes. Rusty loves this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of vegetable matter in here, as you can see. Um, it's all clumped together, as you can see, because there's still quite a bit of dirt in there. See. Um, three years ago, when I, when I actually bought this fleece, um, I laid some of it the ones that I washed at the time, I laid it all out on the um, driveway of my parents' house. Um, and we had four dogs rolling around in these fleeces. I mean, they were really sheepy, still fairly humid from having been uh, clipped. And yeah, we had four dogs rolling around on the fleeces, getting completely dirty because it was the this brown fleece was actually a lot cleaner than the white fleeces uh, mainly because they have a shorter staple length hair uh, whereas the the white fleeces I have are pretty long um, long hairs um, so yeah uh, that's the reason I didn't get to podcast last week um, Sunday I was washing fleeces and doing other things and then Monday when I had planned on podcasting um, it rained most of the day so there was no really no good lighting for, for podcasting so anyway I did finish two objects the first one was the socks I was working on which were the um, no-show socks by La Maison Rilili really. I used Drops Delight in um, a yellow pink purple colorway this is what I have left over this little ball, I had to do a bit of um, yarn management because um, the ball, uh, the yarn I was using, so the, the drops the light, um, it was a skein of 59 grams. Originally, it, it should have been 50 grams, but this one was fairly heavy of, uh, at 59 grams. But still, it didn't have quite the yardage I was supposed to have for the socks. However, I still have this left over, and I believe... I used 44 grams, so I have quite a bit left over. Did I use 44 grams? I can't remember. Um, I'll have it in my 
project page on, on Ravelry. Um, but I found three knots in this ball of yarn. And two of the knots changed colorway completely. So they went from one color to a different color, like further along in the sequence of, of, of the, um, the, the, gra uh, the gradients of the yarn. As you can see here on the, on the pink, it went directly to the yellow without going through the orange first. And the same thing happened here with the, the purple. This was the very end of the skein. I was working from the inside out. So I had to remove this whole section um, to be able to have a an, a nicer flow of color, so, so to speak, in the in the second sock. This was the first sock I knit. So it started with the orange and then it faded nicely into the to the purple and then to the pink and then and then into the um, purple again, which is where this, this started fading back into the uh, into the yellow. But and no, it, yeah. So I ended up with the purple here, and then it, I used it started fading into the yellow over there, as you can see. And then I got to this section here of the yellow, and this was starting to fade back into the purple again. As you can see, there's a bit of yellow here. And then that's where I encountered the first knot, and it just jumped right into the orange. So what I did, I ripped back to um, roughly over here, somewhere over here in the, in the orange section. Um, you can still see there's a bit of a stripe here of purple, it's a bit of a darker stripe. Um, and that was when, where I joined I, so I ripped back to a couple rows before the orange, the, the purple started, the orange started fading straight into the purple, and um, took this chunk of, of yarn out, and connected it to this part where it was again going from the, the orange to the yellow to the purple, and just split splice it together and carried on from there. And then they added in a completely different color of blue at the end. So this must have been the end of the, the fade or something uh, of, the, of the ball. I don't know. It just did not make sense. The, uh, the color sequence did not make any sense whatsoever. I thought I would have two pretty much identical socks, but as you can see, one's basically all purple and the other one is all yellows and oranges, but they match, and even though I did the size I was supposed to do, um, they don't fit at all. I added extra repeats for length, as suggested in the pattern, and they still don't fit. I needed to add at least two more repeats um, to make them fit, and yeah, so I already found someone who's going to take them, they have smaller feet than me, so... If that doesn't work out, I'll let you know, and maybe I'll have them to give to someone else. What I'm going to do, because I, I am definitely knitting them again, I will be knitting them with different yarn, um, probably some thicker yarn, on some bigger needles, because I was knitting them on 2.25, and then wherever it says to, as it's a paid for pattern, I'm not going to give away too much, but wherever it says to knit just a plain round, I'm going to add maybe two or three rounds instead of just the one round. That way I'll add length to it without changing the pattern too much. Uh, I, d I did like the construction of it. Um, it's a toe up construction. As I can't, I can't attest to how they wear because I can't put them on my feet. Um, yeah, so this was unfortunately a knitting fail for me, but someone else is gonna be lucky enough to get a pair of socks that they didn't have to knit. So yeah. And this is, like I said, this is what I have left over, which is a, I can't remember exactly how much, but um, I didn't end up playing yarn chicken as I thought. Then another project I mentioned two weeks ago that I was going to start. Um, and I started again, I started straight away. I finished the first talk on the Sunday evening uh, after podcasting. And then my hands were really sore from the small needles and the, the fairly tight gauge. Um, so I picked up the other project I talked about, which was 
the a scarf I was going to make, a scarf or a cowl, using two yarns held together, which was the Rowan Kid Silk Haze and Kid Silk Night, which is a, a kid mohair and silk blend by uh, by Rowan Yarns, and the Ovelia Negra Olivia Yarn, which is a 55-45 uh, merino cotton blend. And I started that on the Sunday after I finished the first sock. And I did the toe of the second sock, but like I said, my hands were hurting. Um, I actually spent two days with this finger, my ring finger on my left hand, uh, completely swollen from the way I was holding the, um, the sock needles. Um, so I focused, for two days I focused on the, the um, scarf. Sorry, Rusty's looking at me begging for attention. Um, because that was, I knit those on... I knit that on 6mm needles. I did a fisherman's rib, which is a really simple stitch pattern to, to follow. And I got a pretty long scarf. I haven't taken measurements of this thing yet. yet. I need to. I need to measure my gauge for this as well, which wasn't important as I was making it, but I'd like to have it for future rep reference. Um, so let me start by showing you. I had uh, the Kid Silk Haze in a light pink color. Um, go back and watch the last episode of, uh, where I showed the yarn because I have absolutely not a single inch or centimeter left of this yarn I used every every last scrap of it so much so that when I was binding off I ran out of the Kid Silk Night for the last six stitches so I, bound, I, I wasn't going to rip back because this yarn is not really conducive to ripping back um, so I just finished those last stitches in the Olivia yarn, which I had plenty of. So, I had roughly 75 grams worth of little scraps of like anywhere between 3 and 16 grams of Olivia yarn. And my idea was to use up all of them. And then in the end I had to go take, um, use up some of my um, bigger skeins. Uh, to finish off the, the shawl, because I had about 80, I, I did the calculations and I had about 85 meters or so left of the kids silk haze, which I wasn't going to cut it off there and have a tiny little bit left over. So, I started with the kids silk haze in the shadow, uh, in the 653, which was a shadow colorway, that's the name of it, and the moorland. So that's this section here. Then I changed to the crab apple. Um, the moorland is the Olivia yarn. The crab. Uh, so I'll just name the Olivia yarns, and then when I change to the Kid Silk Knight, I'll mention that, and I'll carry on with the the yarns I used. So this was moorland. This is crab apple. As you can see, this was just three grams. This was three grams. It pretty much evened out. Then here I had slightly more of the robin's egg, which is blue. Let's stand up and move closer. So you can see the colors better. So we're here at Robin's Egg. Then we changed to Kingfisher. So I'll just you can see the color change there. Kingfisher I had 16 grams. So as you can see, there's quite a chunk of it. From Kingfisher, and here the you can see the difference here. And so this is Kingfisher still, this is Tweed. From Tweed, again, I had fairly, quite a bit. From Tweed, I went on to the purples, which was, the first one was um, Black Current over here. From, oh no, sorry, this is Denim. This is still Denim. This is like a, a, a blue-purple kind of color. So with the Denim, that's where I changed into the Kid Silk Knight, which is the, the darker purple um, mohair. And there's maybe about four rows here. You see, there's about four rows here that's still with the denim before I changed to the black currant, which was only four grams, so there's like very little. With the darker one, it's slightly harder to see the color change, but you can still see them. So we have black current and then we changed into the plum colorway and then 
that changed, no, this is the Cassis colorway, sorry, the Cassis colorway, then that changed into the plum colorway where I have, and again, here you can see the line. Um, you can see up close, you can really, you know, if you're holding this, you can t totally see that the color changes. I'm just going to move to the side so you And then, so this is the, um, the plum, which I had quite a lot of as well. Then I changed to geranium. And this is a lot brighter in, in real life. And then, like I said, I still had all of this left in the kit the Kid Silk Knight. So I picked up my Passion Flower where I had a, a larger bowl from ball and I finished off the, the scarf. This is a super fluffy and warm scarf for the winter so and Rusty was moving around because he didn't want this on him. Soot absolutely loves this. He was like making a little nest in this as I was missing it. So as you can see it's quite long. Let's see. It's pretty much double my wingspan. Um, so that's long enough for a nice scarf to wrap around. Now this is probably going to be a scarf that I'm going to gift because I think it's going to be too hot for me. It's going to have to be seriously freezing here for me to wear this. So I'll put that there. Uh, let's see it. All the colors. Uh, then it was almost the end of the month. I finished this on Tuesday last week, so on the 30th, on the 29th. And I was like, I'm not going to start any big projects. I want to finish off the month with no projects on my needles, which is something I've been trying to do um, all year. And sorry, I'm going to move the camera slightly closer if Rusty will allow it. Okay, so I decided to pick up my pinwheel blanket again and make a couple of squares and I managed to do two blocks so one block a day one on Wednesday and one on Thursday and just as a reminder of what the blanket looks like at the moment uh, I only have three rows I want to make eight rows so I'm missing five but this is what it looks like at the moment and I'll only show okay rest is gone I can move the camera even closer now. Again, yeah, sorry for the movement. So, this is what it looks like. I have six blocks across. Um, so next time I'll show you, I hopefully have more squares added to it. So, I'll fold it up properly later. And let's go and join that over there. Let's put that up there too. So, um, I decided to work on that, um, adding more blocks. So I have, this is what I've added so far. It's actually three blocks worth of yarn in here, but I did the third one yesterday, uh, so that was already September. Um, so let me show you what I've done. I have ends to weave in still. I'll, my process for this one is I do the six blocks, which is a row, and then I weave in all the ends and I attach it to the blanket, and then I weave in the ends of um, of the yarn that I use to attach the um, the blocks. So this is the first block, and I'm the only thing where's where the other ones I sit and choose the yarn and maybe sort out the yarns I'm going to be using more or less in the color scheme. This time I decided for this row I was just going to uh, knit the yarns in the order I, I use them for projects knit so far this year. So it starts with Sock Madness. That was the first time I used any sock yarn. Um, this was the first Sock Madness sock I knit. Then this was a sock I, I knit in between the first and the second round of Sock Madness. This is um, the next sock Magnus socks, these two together, and these two together were the third sock Magnus socks I knit. These two together were shawl. I still have to block. So that was my first block. Then I did the second block. Um, basically, apart from this purple 
this purple triangle here, all seven of these colors here were one sock. This was the foot of the sock, and these were all in the color work section of the sock. I tried to do them all in the order I knit, knit them in, but uh, I would have had two purples next to one another, so I decided to change this purple out to this one, and that's a blue, which you can hardly see, or you can see a bit of a difference. So this is my second block, and then yesterday I went to meet up with a friend, um, we were supposed to go to a cafe, but we decided to meet up at Ovelia Negra, which was open after vacation. It has been open during the month of August, but uh, during the week, and I've not been able to go during the week. So I decided to go on, uh, we decided to go yesterday, and we ended up staying at the, at the shop instead of going to the cafe, which is totally fine. Uh, and a couple more friends uh, showed up, and we just spent the rest of the afternoon knitting and chatting. And even though I, I did take the whip, I'm um, actually started on the 1st of September, which I'll show you in a minute. I decided to take this along with me as well and start the next block because I can do this pretty much without looking at it, without thinking about it. So that was probably better than sitting there trying to concentrate on some lace knitting uh, while talking to friends and then probably having to come home and working the whole thing out. So this is the block I knit next. And this was another sock I did in between rounds of Sock Madness. These two were the last pair of socks I did for Sock Madness, and these are the pair of socks that unfortunately I didn't end up finishing on time and I got out of Sock Madness. And then these five were my um, uh, Hohi Locatelli Mystery Knit Along. And that was the third block. So this is the third, so I'm halfway through the row now. And for now, I'm just going to put put aside. I already have the next row set up. And in case you're wondering, um, I'm, I like to keep track of the yarns I'm using. So I made up a, a spreadsheet with several... It's an ex Excel work, work, workbook. Sorry. It's an Excel workbook with several um, sheets in showing different things. So... Um, basically, this is the one I'm going to show you is where I identify exactly which yarn I used in each triangle. Let's pull it up. So this is the part. These are the three I've already done. Now it doesn't say exactly which yarn it is. Uh, from the I I know which ones they are because I have uh, another sheet where it says exactly which yarns they are. So that's how I keep track of my triangles. Just, you know, uh, for later on, if I'm looking at it and I want to see if I can't remember where I used this, a specific, where that yarn came from, then I'll know. So, these are my current, this is a, it's a whip, it's an uh, ongoing whip, but my plan is to have it finished by the end of the year. So, um, that is the plan. We will see if I can manage to do so. Then I have this big bag here, which I had the whole all six blocks worth of yarn in there. So this is quite empty now, but it's got the other one in there. It's got my finished blocks in there, and this is the yarn I'm using for um, going all the way around. So that's what is in this bag. Okay, so all these minis up there too. Nice picture. Um, then I'll show you the whip I'm currently working on, which I started on Friday. And that's uh, the Ravello sweater, but um, instead of adding stripes like the original one, um, I've decided to add a lace, a lace pattern to it that I've been meaning to try out. And um, I've not gotten very far. Yesterday I hardly knit on this at all because I wanted to finish the other block that I started at the... Um, at the impromptu knit group yesterday um, and again because I'm adding lace to this uh, and there's like certain things you have to do for the for the pattern and you know the increases and everything I create my own full spreadsheet so I know what to do um, also keeps track of stitch count which is one thing I was uh, I'm doing this year I'm keeping track of how many stitches I knit into my projects um, just as a 
I don't know, it was just something that interested me and I have been keeping this up for, um, up until now, so. This is, let's see, again, I like to knit on small circular needles, so I can't really show you the whole thing, but this is it. This is what you're seeing is the front, and then here this is the back, and let me stretch out just a bit so you can see the stitch pattern, and that's it. I'm using drops, alpaca, and this is a mix, it's a, it's a gray mix, it's not a solid gray, you can see there's some color changes to it. It's just a light and lightish and darker gray. And I had three different lots of this yarn. Um, I bought this all at Bal's Tongue when they were still open. Um, 23rd of May 2015. And uh, there must have been a, an alpaca, a, a drops alpaca sale going on for me to have bought them. Um, usually that's when I bought, like, in bulk, so to speak. So, um, Unfortunately, Ball's Tone has closed now, so I'm gonna, if I need any more of this yarn, I'm going to have to find out where I can buy it. Um, but what I'm doing is, I'm using the, the lot, so this lot, um, I have seven skeins, or I have seven of these little skeins, um, balls. So I'm going to use this up first, and hopefully that should be enough to get me through the whole body of the sweater. I am making the largest size of the sweater because the previous version I made of the Ravello, um, it fit fine on top, but as it didn't have it, I mean, and really, I could have alter, uh, altered the, um, the sweater to make it fit me better on the bottom by increasing stitch count. Um, I might have to do that on this one, oh, we will see. But I decided to knit the largest size. That should give me plenty of positive ease, and um, I'm fine with that. This is, it's a lacy sweater, it, it will block out quite a bit. Um, I did do a gauge swatch for it, and I did block the gauge swatch. I took measurements before and after, and the stitch count wasn't actually that much off, so, in terms of the lace. Um, so, to be on the safe side, I'm just knitting the larger size, and if I see that it's is getting too big, then I'll just omit some increases uh, for, for the raglan um, part here at the, at the top. Um, yesterday was 30 degrees, another reason for not knitting on this during the day. It was just too hot. And um, so yeah, I'm using the seven skeins I have of this color, uh, of this lot, for the body. And then I have three of the other one. Um, in terms of yardage, that is still more than enough to do the large size and still have plenty left over. So I'm hoping that maybe I only need one of the other one to use for maybe finishing the sleeves. And just by looking at them, having them next to one another, I cannot tell any difference in terms of colors. Uh, we'll see how far I get in terms of sleeves uh, on, you know, when, when I get to that, um, if I'm going to alternate skeins, because um, the sleeves I'm doing plain, as you can see here, this is a sleeve. I'm just doing that in plain stock in it, so I could stripe it there if necessary. Um, but then again, you know, it's on the sleeves. If there's a bit of a, a change in colors, I, I'm okay, as long as it's the same on both. So I might have to do the sleeves two at a time. We will see. Then, um, yeah. That's it for... Oh no, that's not it. Because I said I wasn't going to buy any yarn this month. And I was at Arabia and they had new... They had just received a new shipment of Cusario's Merino for Us yarn. Which um, is 100% wool. And it's 50 grams and 125 meters. And this is what it looks like. The little orange sticker uh, is what they use at the shop to indicate that this is a, it's a different lot. So this was the only ball left over uh, with the others, and this so this was just a different lot. That's the only thing. Um, but seeing as I only bought one of each of these colors, uh, that's fine because I have a plan for for a 
a blanket. Not necessarily a, a baby blanket, it's just a blanket I want to make based on, um, and I've mentioned this before in previous episodes, on the works by Piet Mondrian, uh, a Dutch um, painter and artist that I really like. And that's just, you know, it's very straightforward, very clean, simple lines. So I thought I, they didn't have a yellow that I liked and they didn't have a blue that I really liked. So I decided to change up the colors. So I'm using the black, which is one of the main colors. And instead of using white, I'm using this light gray. Uh, and then I switched in the, instead of having the prime colors as Piet Mondrian uses in his paintings, I decided to change the colors up a, a bit, but keeping in those, um, um, keeping them in those color ranges. So for blue, I chose this turquoise. Then for the red, I chose this pink. And for the yellow, I went for this bright green. So this is what I'm going to be using. This is going to be for my swatch. It's going to be a fairly decent sized swatch. It's not just knitting straight for its um, uh, guard stitch. Uh, I will be making a mini version of the blanket. So I can also um, count for yardage, how many, uh, how much I use in per, per stitch count so that I can then calculate how many balls I will need of the colors and in principle unless they have a nice yellow that I, I like these are the colors I will be using for the bigger blanket as well um, and who knows maybe if I just start off the blanket as planned I'll just buy some more <coughs> people in the hallway uh, I'll buy some more and just um, add on to the blanket. Like I said, because these rusty, these four colors never touch. So, like I said, this is a different lot number from what was there. If, in the meantime, I decide to continue the blanket the way it is, uh, and I go buy some more of this one, and the lot is not the same, that's okay, because they only ever touch the black. And again, the black, if it's not the same lot color, it doesn't bother me too much anyway um, so I don't know if I'm going to start this this year I have some other plans um, I've basically already decided what else I want to knit this year I have um, they're very ambitious plans let me put it this way I have three three sweaters planned for this month so that's the first one I'm hoping to once I get past the raglan increases, that's the only place I really have to pay attention to the lace section. After that, it's just straightforward going with the lace. The lace is eight rows, very easy to memorize. Um, there's rest rows in between, so um, it's always a, a lace row and then a rest row, so it's really simple to do. Um, I'm hoping to get this one done fairly quickly. Like I said, the sleeves is plain stockinette, so I can get those done uh, fairly quickly too. Then I'm going to do knit another version of the uh, hoodie shawl cardigan, which I knit last year. I have some uh, more alpaca uh, for ply from Artisano, and those are in um, three shades of blue and a black. So I'm going to use those. Um, I haven't decided which colors I'm going to use for which sections, but um, I have three skeins of 50 grams, so 150 grams per color. That should give me more than enough yardage to finish that one. And then the third one, I was going to knit uh, Amory by Isabel Kramer. And I've not decided on yarn yet. I was planning on using um, Malabrigo lace. Not this colorway, but just Malabrigo lace. And that's why it's in there to knit up a swatch. But I was with a friend yesterday, like I said, and she knit a garment. Uh, and I've knit a jacket out of this before. and. I've washed it and it's not felted and my friend knit, knit this gorgeous uh, cardigan out of it um, which she actually had a photo of it before she uh, she washed it. It completely felted. She hand washed it in cold water with a wool wash um, and she didn't rub it or anything, she just let it, left it to soak 
uh, and it's melted in cold water. So um, she talked to the to the place where she bought it, and they've got in contact with Mal Malabrigo, and um, they're gonna take the garment um, to run some tests to see why why the yarn melted. I know it's a single ply, and it does felt easily. So I'm now maybe considering reconsidering using this yarn for an, um, a sweater that I might use quite a bit of, M might use on, on a regular basis. Because um, I know that the cardigan I have knit, it, it has oh. started to felt a bit underneath the arms. Um, you know, but that's regular felting in any garment, uh, garment basically. Um, then if I manage to finish all three of those garments, sweaters during this month and I'm just going to carry on with the, the pinwheel blanket over here and then for October of course it's Socktober month um, it's socks all month long I've already planned which socks I'm going to knit I just need to figure out which yarns I'm going to be using and then for November what did I have planned for November I think another sweater definitely a baby garment that I have to make for a friend of mine um, and what else had, did I have planned? I can't remember. I know I've written it down somewhere, uh, so I, I don't forget. I've basically written down the pattern I want to make, the yarn I plan on uh, using. That might change, obviously. Um, and then for December, my idea for December is to just finish everything that's on my needles. So um, I have the uh, Persian Dream blanket that I already decided. Um, not to continue as a blanket. Um, I, I love the yarn I'm using, which is a, a local Portuguese um, yarn, uh, but it's just way too bulky. I will be using that yarn for a different type of blankets, um, just not for the, the Persian dreams. So I'm just going to do two half hexagons, uh, make it sew it onto the hexagon I have, and make it into a pillow case. Um, then I have the um, Scheepjes Higgekal that I started and that I stopped basically. Um, again, I love the, the the project, but it's crochet. Um, I have not. I actually like crocheting. I, I, that's not the issue. The issue is that it's um, too narrow to be uh, too wide to be a scarf, and too narrow um, for me anyway to really use as a a wrap or anything. So the only other option I would have for that is to use it as a table runner, but I can't have anything on the table because I have a cat that likes to be on the table to get away from the dogs, and I'm worried he'll just ruin it um, by you know chewing on the yarn and pulling at the yarn. So and too, too much work has gone into it for for me to put it out here and have him um, mess it up. So what I've decided is I'm not going to add any more um, length to it. I'm going to finish the, the cross stitching section that I'm working on and then I'm just going to use the remaining yarn uh, which is the Schreepjes um, stone washed in a blue colorway. Uh, and I'm sorry I didn't bring the project here but I'll um, I'll link it in the project note in the in the show notes and you can go on to Ravelry and have a look at it. And I'm just going to turn it into a bag. Um, I might line it with some fabric, might not, might just keep it simple. It's a, a, at a pretty tight uh, gauge anyway in terms of the, the crochet. So I think it, it could do with not having have it lined. So what I'm going to do is with the remaining, hopefully just use one ball, of, uh, one skein or something to make a strap for it. And then sew it all together and um, use it as a bag. Um, just an everyday bag that you know, put my wallet in and my phone in and everything. Um, so that's two projects. I finished. I'm gonna finish the, the pinwheel blanket, and then I have a project that's been languishing since 2014, which is the um, Dragon by Heidi Bears. I don't know if I want to take that out or not. We'll see how far I, I get with all my plans of finishing everything. Um, because I want everything off the needles for the Christmas Eve cast on, which is usually hosted by Danny from um, Little Bob and Knits uh, podcast. And I'm hoping to 
cast on a pair of socks probably for for that and so that's a small project that I can finish until the end of the year I want to finish the year with not like all my needles nicely put away and not a single project on the needle so that I can start fresh in in the new year we'll see this is my plan at the moment we will see how far I get with that um, okay I've talked for close to 40 minutes now I will um, maybe add a little footage of the metro ride I took yesterday and I thought I had a, a video of the, the shop but um, I deleted it by accident I thought I was deleting a photo that didn't come up um, too good and I deleted the, the video instead um, so next time I go to Ovelia Negra I'll make sure to take a proper video and I'll be able to insert it at the time which is probably at, at the end of the month only because um, I have plans for next week um, next week there is a f uh, art fair in Famalica I will be going there I still have to talk to um, Angela who is the owner of Dona Agulha the yarn shop in, um, in Famalica yesterday should have been the uh, knit group um, at, uh, at her shop but she decided to change it to next week as there is the art fair and it with, uh, I think I believe we've been invited to go to the art fair and sit and it's at the art fair there uh, and maybe I, I believe she also mentioned something about being able to sell some uh, some of our wares um, but like I said I need to talk to her about it but if you're in from Molly Kong next week um, that's where I'll I will be either at the art fair or at the shop and then the weekend after that, I probably plan on going to my parents' place again. Hopefully, if the weather's still nice, I might do a bit more washing of fleeces. And then the weekend after that is already will be the 23rd, and that's our knit group here in Porto. So yeah, I have most of my weekends planned for the for this month. Um, so I'm now gonna have uh, my uh, very late breakfast because I've not eaten yet. I've been running around since 8 o'clock uh, doing household chores, I've taken the dogs out for two walks already, um, they don't need to go out for another hour or so. So I'm going to eat and do some knitting on my sweater, and I'm going to catch up on some podcasts that I've not been able to watch. That's one of, one of the things that, I usually watch the podcasts over the weekend um, that come out during the week, uh, and when I'm at my parents' place, the internet connection is so slow that I really can't do that. So I have a two work two weeks worth worth of podcasts to watch. So that should keep me occupied for the rest of the day. Um and keep me company in doing my knitting. So um I already checked there's not really any movies I want to see on TV anyway. And um everything I have taped I've already seen several times so that's what I'll be doing. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday or whenever it is you're watching this and hopefully this will be up in just an hour or so, hopefully, um, as I'll be eating breakfast and editing this uh, so I have the rest of the afternoon free to um, knit. I'll see you next week um, and I, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to add any videos to this episode. I have a couple that I might add. But it's already quite long, so we will see. Um, or you will see. I'll have to decide as I'm editing this. So Have a nice week. I'll see you guys next week. And have enjoy your knitting. Bye.